We pushed him away, but now we need him more than ever. Yeah, this, this is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Episode of Locked On Bay. We're brought to you by Game Time. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. I am your host, Cam Stewart, going over still kind of the post mortem of this blowout loss to the University of Texas that everyone's still talking about here as we get into UCF week. We'll break down the nights a little bit later in the week, but for today, I'm not, I'm not going to dwell too much on the UT loss. I, I don't really want to talk about it either, y'all. I really don't. Um, we'll hear from Dave Miranda later in the show, kind of talking about that game a little bit, but more about his personnel and the guys coming back, one of which could be quarterback Blake Shapin. Dave Miranda announced yesterday in his press conference that Blake was listed as day-to-day. Uh, that's pretty much all he said, so didn't say, you know, we're not expecting him for Saturday. Didn't say they were expecting him for Saturday. But just that he's day-to-day, he's doing the team drills, he's involved in practice. You are at a point, both for Baylor's season and possibly for Aranda's tenure, uh, to get him out there if if he is healthy. If he's not 100%, still send him out there probably. If he, if he is not going to ruin this any further and if he's not going to be in a humongous amount of pain then and, and it's not going to affect his future, then... Bayward needs him out there because I think people are a little hesitant to talk about it. They they will talk about how bad Sawyer Robertson's been as as easy low hanging fruit. They'll do it all the time. I've been doing it. They'll they'll talk about how um, they need to recruit more quarterbacks, how the the play calling needs to change, and and all of that is true. But I think they're a little reticent. Bayward fans at large, to talk about how much this team needs Blake Shapin back because of all the heat they gave him from the last half of last season and all through the offseason this year. When are we going to see Sawyer Robertson? How long until Blake messes this up and we see the the kid in there? Now you need him back. Blake was super impressive in that week one loss to Texas State. He was probably your best player. Um, there were still some things needed to work out, especially in the red zone. Uh, but he threw it all over the place, threw 300 yards, couple, uh, three, I think three passing touchdowns in that game. He was he was on the money. This this looked like the Blake we saw in the Big 12 championship against Oklahoma State and early in the season last year. You know, specifically that game against Iowa State, I think was was maybe the, the probably the best game he played all of last year. But played well against UT at the end of the season when he was still getting a ton of flack. Played well against Oklahoma and that win on the road. So he showed some flashes once again last year of being the passer and the commander of this offense that earned him the job over Gary Bohannon, right? Probably rightfully earned him the job over Gary Bohannon. Nothing against Gary, but that's clearly the direction this offense was going. And he didn't exactly light the world on fire at USF. So Blake Shapin, very capable last season. And this season, and I say there's there's no one more popular in town than the backup quarterback in this scenario. That's what Blake Shapin's going to be for this show because he could be the key that that turns this Baylor season around. And what I mean by that specifically is I said it in the post game on Saturday is there are winnable games on this schedule with this conference. This conference stinks. It stinks, man. It's the worst power five in the country right now. Um, and I don't think it's really close. Um, the ACC is a lot more competitive. Pac-12 looks pretty darn good when you see, uh, you know, all the hype surrounding Colorado and what happened to them by probably the second or third best team in the Pac-12 this past weekend. Maybe fourth best team, depending on who you ask. Oregon just knocked the crap out of them. So the Big 12 is terrible. It's terrible. And Baylor might not even be the worst team in it. Oklahoma State's bad. They're not on your schedule. That's too bad. 
UH, bad. Home game. Tech, bad. And without their quarterback now, that's a home game. Iowa State, bad. That's a home game. West Virginia, unbelievably, is the best, probably the best home game remaining for Baylor. And I don't think it's really close. They're a good team, man. Anyway, all that, you can win some games here in the conference, which seems impossible based on what we saw Saturday night and based off what we've seen against FBS opponents this year. But it is possible. If you have the right guy at the wheel, Blake Shapin's the right guy. Now, until he's fully healthy, I don't know how big a contributor he'll be. But if he's 50% good, it's probably better than what, than what you have right now. The total package. But Blake was impressive in that week one win. So how important is he to this team? Right now, for me, he's damn near the key in this thing. I didn't even, I don't think I had him on my top five Baylor players, impact players coming into this season, just because I thought it was going to be the supporting cast that, that carried him offensively. But you've seen it by the product on the field, especially last weekend against Texas, how badly you need Blake Shapin in there. No touchdown passes to a receiver this year for the bears. All the tight ends in terms of the passing game. And I honestly, I still don't think the receivers were that bad going up until this Texas game where they had some drops. It's not I, I wasn't looking at them and saying these these guys are mailing it in, they're getting no separation. I thought it, the, the problem was on the quarterback getting them the ball. This week it was a little bit of both. So you need that leader out there that Blake Shapin is for you know, you you want to say he's not the leader, that he can't rally this team. They've said it time and again how much more he has grown in the offseason specifically. And it's a positive takeaway from that Texas State game. Defensively, they were just horrendous. I mean, Baylor was down early and down the whole game, and that offense just kept coming back because Blake Shapin kept leading them back. You know, it's it's so easy for a guy who, who threw 10 picks last year to – just fall back in, into old habits, make one mistake, turnover, and the game's really over. Like, like you guys roll over. And they didn't do that. Blake throws for 300 yards, three touchdowns. They, they did not do that. He constantly led, led this team back. And clearly, based on all the discourse going into last season, going into this season, whether you like the quarterback, whether you like the coaching staff, this is their guy. Blake is their guy. And he should be. He's, you know, he's only a sophomore coming into the last year when he won the job. Blake is their guy. He is their future and their present as soon as he gets back out there on the field. And say whatever you want. Look, there were times where he could not move the ball last year. He wasn't making good decisions. Sure. Would you take six and six right now? Because I sure as heck would. I sure as heck would. And and, and the te teams are going to be bringing the house every time. You know, you got a quarterback who, who really struggles to go through pro progressions. You've got an offensive line that is being patched together, and you have no running game. No running game. Why would they focus on your passing attack? When you are so hamstrung by not being able to protect the quarterback not being able to make a good decision, and not being able to run the ball, why are they going to use a good pass defense against you? You're so one-dimensional. That was part of what I was talking about, of Texas not having to get out of first gear in a 38-6 to victory in the conference on the road. It's embarrassing. That said, when you have an experienced quarterback in there, one who is an accurate passer and does, on the whole, make good decisions, they kind of you know, piled up a little bit towards the end of last season, ending up with 10 picks. But for the most part, he's a good decision maker. He's not a bad pre-snap quarterback. He can get out of the pocket a little bit, a little bit. And he he's an accurate passer. He can throw the ball down the field. 
Now, 15 yards down the field, okay, that might be a little much, but that's more than you got right now. It's more than you got right now. So to answer the question again, how important is Blake Shapin? He could be the difference in this team even challenging for a bowl game. And it sounds crazy right now, but look at the schedule. I'm telling you, West Virginia might be the best team left on the schedule. And this was a guy who didn't have the job security on Labor Day, Neil Brown. And now he's leaving the best team left on Baylor's schedule. Uh, TCU. TCU is good, and that's on the road. I'll give it that one. But the last two weeks of the season are where you're at. So it's, it's, and, and, and that also shows how crucial this weekend's game at UCF is. If you lose and you're one in, what's that make you? One in four. You, you've got to almost run the table four and two the rest of the way, five and two. God, I can't do math. Just to get into a bowl game. Well, if you have Blake Shapen out there on Saturday, UCF is still a better team than you. Don't get me wrong. But if you have your full arsenal, which Dave Aranda talked about, and we'll we'll hear from him later in the show, talked about getting that full arsenal back. He likes where it's at. If you can get up to full speed with this team, you have a chance to win on Saturday. So how important is Blake Shapen? He's pretty darn important. Inter- he is as important to Baylor as game time is to you finding tickets. And I know that because this weekend I had to find tickets for this Baylor Texas game. Now in hindsight, do I wish I hadn't got them? I mean, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm still glad I got them. And the place I went to was game time. They, they hooked me up. They, I couldn't find any good deals anywhere else. The game was sold out. Game time had the tickets. Okay. Game time was there. So not that I didn't trust them anyway, but they are absolutely my number one now. So game time is where you need to go, especially the closer you get to that game. If you're looking to get out to Orlando this weekend, do it. Treat yourself. Okay, get on that vacation. Head on over to the bounce house and find game time for the tickets. You take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. So you download their app, create an account, use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Okay, we are giving you money to go to a football game. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use Locked On College, $20 off the first purchase. Terms apply. So again, have that account, redeem the code. I'll even spell it out for you. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E. That's that Baylor degree going to work. For $20 off, Game Time today, last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. And now looking at this team as a whole, not just Blake Shape and not just the quarterback position, but the team as a whole. This is a team that Dave Miranda has doubled down on two weeks in a row now. He said, this is a Big 12 championship roster. In fact, David Smoke asked him again this week. He, he said, do you want to change your mind on that? Dave said, no. No, I believe in this team. I believe in this roster and these guys in the locker room. Love to hear that from the coach, especially one who I think is really genuine. I don't necessarily agree or share the sentiment, but I'm wondering what he's seeing in practice that we can't see on Saturdays. Because he, he mentions it at every press conference, there's something. The main thing is, is, is they're not committing penalties or false start penalties in practice. They're protecting well in practice. They're having explosive plays in practice, which is the opposite of what we've seen so far. Pretty much all of those things, but especially the explosive plays. He sees this as an explosive offense who can be a pass-first offense. And there's no reason for him to blow smoke up our orifices at this point. You know, we see what we see on the field, and it, it does nothing if he just says, you know, we're a running team. We just haven't gotten there yet. So all that to say, I don't think he's lying. I think he is seeing explosive plays in practice. We've not seen it in the game. And so I'm just wondering what what is it all coming together that he's seeing to make a championship roster? Because I I look even the way we were looking at it before the season, I don't think anyone was seriously considering Big 12 championship. I mean, I thought, okay, eight home games. This could be a nine and three team. They could they could surprise some people. They could cause some chaos. Storm the field once or twice with these with all these home games. Not Big Twelve championship. So 
it's interesting to me, all these young guys that are out there getting time, you know, down to three corners last week um, and, and all young guys. And he sees this as a championship roster. He sees, you know, Blake Shapin and Matt Jones and the Barrington brothers and Keytron Jackson and Richard Reese and Devin Lemire. And he sees a championship roster. I wish I had that kind of confidence. I really do. I think they're a better team than this. I I truly believe that. I don't see this as being any kind of championship team. And the crazy thing is, sitting here at one and three, they could be a championship team just based on what's left in their schedule. They've only played one conference game. It's been It's been bad, but they've only played one conference game against comfortably the best team in the conference. And that's over with. And you're getting healthy. Is that enough for you, the fan, to, to believe they can they can go on a run here? Because do I think they could be a Big 12 championship team? No. But if Blake comes back this week and he's humming it in there like he was week one and they can move the ball, get this defense some rest, get the darn ball in the end zone a few times, they could go on a run. I think they're a healthy Blake shape in a way from going on a run. And what that would mean would be being a bowl team, being a team with a winning record, being a team that will surprise some people. I would say pull off a big upset, but there's no real big teams on their schedule. I don't know that Kansas State's going to be ranked. I don't know that TCU is going to be ranked when the time comes around. but. One that can cause some chaos in this conference and hopefully not make it a Texas OU final. Yeah, I think they can be that because I've seen flashes from basically every position group, but but the offensive and defensive line, seen flashes from them at some point this season. You know, Utah, the defense in general was really stout. Um Specifically, I thought the linebackers, the D-backs were good too. D-backs were good against Long Island. Quarterback was really good uh, against Texas State. Receivers were good in that game. Tight ends have been dependable ever since. Running backs were actually not bad in that Utah game. I don't think the game plan was all that great, but running backs were good. So all that to say, there is a chance for this to come together. It don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean championship vibes, but it could mean a good football team. There is a good football team in that locker room. Of course, we have far from seen it. And I think the statement itself from Dave is, is a little damning on, on him because if he keeps doubling down after loss, after loss and says, we have a big 12 championship roster in there. Well, if it's not on the players, that means it's on the coaches. And I think he'd probably tell you that and he would take the blame for himself here. But clearly, if there is championship talent in there, then the coaches aren't getting it out of them. And we're just going to have to wait and see as fans if that comes together. Because, even I mean, this won't happen and I'm not condoning it to happen by any means. But even if you fired the coach during the middle of the year, I don't think... You're 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 beyond the pale in terms of getting those guys riled up, even in the perfect situation, even in the Ed Orgeron USC situation, to compete for any kind of championship. So it's not there, and I don't think that's going to happen. And frankly, I don't want it to happen. I know there are some people who think this podcast is just begging for Dave Aranda to get fired, even though I've literally never said it on the podcast. I think his seat is hot, absolutely, and it's something the administration needs to think about if these things keep going the way they're going, but I don't even think they will. I don't think they can afford to fire him, even if they want to. And I don't think they want to just yet. Anyway, looking ahead at Saturday, I think it could be the start of something if they are all healthy. And that's a big if. It's a big if because we haven't had it so far. But I just, I have a weird belief. If Blake Shapin gets back in this and he's ready to go, th th this team could make a run. 
And the way I'm going to prepare for that this week for that big game is to not eat out. I've done that too much recently. So I'm going to start cooking from home. But here's the thing. I am so antisocial. If you guys have seen me in public, you know that. I just, I hate, I hate going to the grocery store, man. It's too crowded. It's like being on the road with the shopping carts. People are just being oblivious. I hate it. I hate it. I hate being behind people. So what I do is I go to Tortash. I'm not kidding. They, if you need fresh groceries for the week and, and you don't have time or you don't want to go to the store like me, you need to try grocery delivery from DoorDash because you'll get everything you want. You're going to get it delivered when you need it. It's going to come right to your door, man. You don't need to leave the house, which is exactly, exactly what I'm looking for. And sometimes I make mistakes too. When I put it in on the app there, you can make easy substitutions right in the app. It's got the best customer support. DoorDash, it delivers the groceries exactly how you want it. Don't mess around with your meals, but also don't go to the grocery store. Just use DoorDash for it. And guess what? You can get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE at checkout. That's a limited time offer. Terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code Locked on college. Don't forget that's locked on college for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. Rounding out the show today, I, I want to hear from Dave again. I thought this was an interesting press conference today. N nothing too surprising. Um, but there is again that that quiet confidence from Dave. He's normally giving you, you know, not negative things, but I could feel the confidence in his answers today. Once again, taking ownership. Um of how this team has struggled and how it's his fault. Um, look, I was at CVS today. I was behind a lady. We were walking to our cars. Her car was parked next to mine. She was facing out. I was facing in. So we're stores are on the same side and I'm waiting for her to go in the door. I promise there's a point to the story. I'm waiting for her to go in her door. And she kind of looks back at me and I'm just like, huh, sorry, like being polite, like going to wait. And she looks at me and she goes, move. I said, okay, ma'am, gave her the old salute, went in the car, steamed about it for a couple of minutes. And I thought, why do you have to be like that? Why do you have to be a female dog? I'm, I'm not doing anything to you. We're, this is literally the most harmless thing ever. We're going to our cars. I have done nothing to inconvenience you. And in that moment, I said, you know what? I am glad when we go to these press conferences that we get to get to talk to Dave Miranda because he's a genuinely nice guy. And I'm going to leave y'all on that again. Dave, take it away. Disappointing uh, game for us on Saturday. Um, today's an opportunity to dive into the tape and make all the corrections and uh, get our team back together tight. And what an opportunity with this next week. Have so much respect for Coach Malzahn and just the offensive mind and the teams that he's had in the past and have uh, been watching a bunch of Auburn film along with just the the myriad of things that we've got to defend from UCF. Um, so their film as well, and it's a it's a uh, challenge, but what a great opportunity! And it's a game that's a, a big one for us to go out and play well and to win. And so um, I know that uh, I feel that way, and the staff does. I know the team does too. And so we're excited to get to it. Take any questions you guys have. Dave, in terms of uh, the red zone, you guys, you know, drive it down there six times, get two field goals. Is it a mindset? Is it execution? I mean, what is the key to, to finishing off those drives with touchdowns? Appreciate that. Yeah, it's, I think it's both. I think the early, uh, early in the game, I think we had some specials that we called. There was a double pass we did not execute. There was a, uh, a look over kind of gadget play that we didn't execute. And those are plays that were kind of, um, or were repped and um, were valued for a situation like that. To, so to not execute them in the moment is disappointing. And, uh, you know, I think the execution is at its greatest for us, unfortunately 
in the low red zone when it's the tightest and the less space and just all of that. And so that's a huge area for us to improve on. I think throw game wise, the windows were so tight that I, you know we've really got to pull a trigger on those things um, and on those balls and get them off. I think there's the one that that we actually did that. It was picked off at the end, you know, at the end. And so I think the, those areas are challenges for us. There's a huge emphasis. We're working on that today. And so I think uh, for us to be down that many times and not get points, you can't expect to win. Dave, what's the first time you're getting to hit the road this season? How important is it for you guys to kind of almost press the reset button after the first four home games and get back to it, maybe in a hostile territory? Appreciate that. Yeah, the anticipating it to be hostile, uh, anticipating, um, uh, you know, the, I know the turnout they're going to have and the excitement they're going to have. And so uh, for us, it's to play together and play hard. I think those two things are uh, required and uh, are on a to-do list for us. And that starts, you know, today with, um, you know, telling the truth on what happened on Saturday and uh, getting the, the necessary adjustments and fixes and then going in with a mindset that it's going to be us versus uh, um, uh, us versus UCF in a really hostile hostile spot. And so I feel good about that. I feel good about the staff and their view. And having talked with a bunch of players yesterday, I feel good about their view too. And so excited to get to it. Thank you, Dave. Good stuff in there. Not like that lady from CVS. Thank you for not being like that lady from CVS. And thank you to all of you listening for not being like that lady from CVS. That's why I love you guys. That's why I'm coming back tomorrow. That's why you can find everything on YouTube, on anywhere you get your podcasts, on Twitter. We are there. Locked on Baylor, at Real Camp Stewart. Stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit more quarterback this week. We're also going to talk a lot of UCF this week as Baylor gets ready for its first road game of the season. Thank you for tuning in today, making it your first listen today, tomorrow, and every day. This has been, always will be, Locked on Baylor.